about half a year ago, me and my friends played a one shot that I mastered, and my basic premise was Mad Max meets D and D. So uh, the players were a bunch of roaming nomads driving their F-150 trucks and camper vans along a barren wasteland. And we used the Beyond the Wall and other adventures rule sets. That's like a uh, an OSR, it's a D&D &D, uh, open gaming license rule set, very rules light and despite Beyond the Wall being a fantasy setting, I had no trouble adjusting everything for my post-apocalyptic setting. And we had a lot of fun. Now, uh, the current campaign I was playing with my friends ended and we are looking for our, ne our next thing. So uh, I asked, yeah, we could play Bloodson again. That's what I called it. And uh, everyone was really excited. So I thought, yeah, sure, let's put a bit more work into it. And I also thought, yeah, let's make a project for the channel out of it. Let's make my own old school revival role playing game. Let's make uh, Blood Sun really big. Now, the basic premise of Blood Sun was Mad Max meets D&D. &D, and there already is a D&D &D world that is kind of similar. That would be Dark Sun from uh, original second edition. And I've read a bit of Dark Sun. It is a phenomenal world if you ask me. But there are no cars in it. There are no high speed chases, high octane adventures. And that is kind of what I was looking for. Just this Fury Road, high octane madness, but with like elves and dwarves and orcs on dirt bikes uh, and fireballs make it even more chaotic and mad. So I uh, won't be just using uh, Dark Sun or any official rule set. Instead, I'll uh, make my own world, I'll make my own rule system, and I'll take you guys along for this journey, and I'd be very happy if you participate, if you uh, comment on what I'm doing, if you give me your ideas, your thoughts, and I'll try to make the most of it. So I looked for a platform to organize and normally I would do my work just with explorer folders and write everything in Word. But there are tools like, uh, for example, World Anvil, where you could create your world, manage it and somehow organize everything but I think this is total overkill and it's doing me more harm than good. Also uh, the free version is kinda limited and the subscription is kinda expensive so World Anvil is out for me. Also looked at Campfire, but I couldn't download the free version for some reason it wouldn't work. And the uh, the pro version, you buy it just once, so uh, price would be okay. But uh, it's hard to share anything with you guys if I just buy this product. 
so campfires out as well. So I decided to just make a folder in my Google Drive and share it with you guys so you can view every document in the folder. And I will just organize and write in Google Drive and Google Docs as if I would have done using Explorer and Word. I also set up a Discord server, the Bloodson Discord server. So I have a text chat for you guys to chime in. I've got here general information where I have the link for the folder, the Google Drive folder for the moment. I have a text chat for world building, rules general, off topic, and one voice channel, maybe for test gaming. Let's see what will happen with it. And let's get started. So far, I'm uh, in the general idea collection stage. So I'm just collecting lots of ideas, ideas I have myself, ideas some of my friends have. And I put everything in the general ideas folder. I've some uh, done some research that is in this folder, moons around a gi gas giant idea. But for now, let's talk about the unsorted ideas. The Bloodson RPG. It's a, it's a working title. For my taste, it's a bit too close to Dark Sun. But uh, it's not a bad title in and of itself. So Mad Max meets DMD. Let me highlight this. Definitely sticking with this. That means I have cars and a wasteland and fantasy races and magic. And I also think it would be nice to have airships in there, like Zeppelin style airships and diesel punk style air combat, like old planes, maybe mostly biplanes. And there might be elves on giants eagles among that and have some more high fantasy elements and action in the sky than uh, traditional Mad Max would have, but I think it would fit really well in the world. I think um, the world is more past the uh, apocalypse and Mad Max. There will be some some uh, cities, some kingdoms that are rebuilding. So civilization is like uh, on the bounce back. So there's a bit more than just having warlords roaming a desert wasteland and the world will be bigger than just a, a few minor settlements and the road in between. The whole setting will be bigger than what we typically see in a Mad Max movie, but there will definitely be uh, a place f to have these high octane Mad Max style adventures. These ideas are not sorted as of yet, just on the order that uh, they came to mind or that my friends gave them to me. So the next idea is dwarves have closed their mountain bunkers to the outside world ages ago to sit this mess out. I think I'm going with this. So, 
these dwarven cities, these mighty halls, are now just legends, and uh, the entrances might be long been buried beneath, beneath the sand of the world. But this gives me, of course, the opportunity to introduce these dwarves later on, or have the players find one of these ruins and explore it and find out what happened of it. So there's some nice adventure material to be have here. This is one of the ideas one of my friends have. The only dwarves on the outside are outcasts. They have sullied themselves with dragon blood to survive. So in uh, the fantasy setting we are most accustomed with, the Dark Eye, Aventurian, uh, dwarves hate dragons. They are like ancestral enemies. So for dwarves to mix themselves with dragons uh, would be heresy. So these dwarves are outcasts uh, and had no access to these bunkers. That's why they are still on the outside. And I think I can make some interesting characteristics for my dwarf player race with this. So this stays. I'm now highlighting everything that I think is very good and will stay. I want goblins as a playable race. Uh, I kind of like this scrappy, chaotic nature that goblins bring to the play. Um, example in Zimbarum you have goblins as a playable race or uh, Sam Regal is playing a goblin in critical role at the moment and I think that's pretty fun so I want goblins as a playable race. They would be good expendable mechanics that have slowly integrated in general humanoid society over the last few hundred years and I would make them a bit less monstrous than the standard GNG d d goblins, though so these are like evolved goblins, but they are still small, they still have very short life expectancy and are pretty chaotic. I want some kind of flying playable race in the game, maybe some kind of harpies, I've seen some nice fantasy illustrations to that effect. In my mind these harpies couldn't have, uh, like, grab things in their hands and fly at the same time because they would need their arms to fly. But maybe they could grab things in their feet, uh, do something like that, the flying. And I think in my setting flying wouldn't be too overpowered because there's technology to fly available. And yeah, I think I can work with this. At first I thought about having the standard fantasy races or a variation thereof. So humans, elves, dwarves, halflings. But I'm not so sure about halflings because they would be very similar to goblins. So maybe they switch places somehow. In the original Dark Sun settings, halflings are like uh, tribes of feral cannibals. And I think that's a pretty nifty idea. Maybe I make them even more monstrous. Uh, that leaves me to the elves. I don't want just standard elves. So I want some kind of elf variant. Maybe they are dark elves, or maybe I have sun and moon elves. Uh, the sun obviously will be very important to the setting, and maybe elemental elves, because I will have elemental magic. So I, uh, when I design my elf race, I have to come up with something. 
I kinda want a cat for grace because cats is something I uh, think a desert setting, a savanna like setting would fit really well with cats. I like like the cat races you get in Magic the Gathering. I've got a really nice Leonid weenie deck I played back in the game. And uh, I've seen catfolk in some other games where they have a savanna or desert like setting. And I think I uh, can make interesting variants with catfolk. Have different sub catfolk races depending on where they are living, if they are a bit more like uh, mountain lions or a bit more like some scrappy. Egyptian desert cat, something like that. So, I work that out. Next idea. The gods have left this world because they could no longer watch the atrocities of the mortals. I like the idea that the gods have left this world. There are no more gods. Not sure if it was because of the atrocities. Which leads into the next idea. Mortal sorcerers killed at least some of the gods in a war. The war of the gods and maybe then I have the bodies of the gods still laying about somewhere in, you know, on, the, on the countryside. Maybe they are like a mountain. So this could be interesting. And now that the gods are gone, there are only great old ones and demons that influence the mortals. That will mean, uh, in game terms, I'll have no clerics, only warlocks and the like, maybe druids. But uh, it will be very sword and sorcery-like setting. Magic will be dangerous and dark. Then my idea is, uh, I always have a very strong visual focus when I design a background such as this. What would it look like? Uh, what would the technology be? The vehicles, the weapons and armor. And I decided for this, uh, if I'm going for planes, I want like prop aircraft, a bit scrappy planes biplanes and stuff and that's some um, crazy aircraft designs in the 1930s before the war and during the war so that should be the best technology that the world currently has no guided missiles no supersonic jets but instead i'll get big zeppelins and biplanes i think that will be fun this is one idea a friend of mine had. Warlocks should be able to absorb the power of holy artifacts. So even if you find an artifact of a god, maybe it will be only one use only, because there's no god that could recharge the artifact. But warlocks can just absorb this power and use it for their own purpose. Horror insects. This is just from my notes. My notes are original in a college blog, handwritten. And I have totally forgotten what horror insects were about. And then there was the idea, maybe the world is in an ice age but I think I'm not going with that. Then one of my idea was that the world is uh, a moon orbiting a gas giant, which would make for a fantastical night sky. Uh, that's a bit like Pandora from the Avatar movie. And I did some research into that. Uh, I've got a design document. You can have... Uh, 
like four different climate zones depending on where on the moon you are. So I think I'm going with this idea for the general structure of my world. One of the ideas why the world is kind of fucked up is because magic ritual affected the orbit of the world. But with the world in the orbit of a gas giant, I think I'm not going for that variant. Instead, it affected the sun itself. The war with the gods affected the sun. Then when I was looking for a player race, we had the idea of giant ants human-sized with a telepathic hive mind they could like rivet metal tools to their shitty and carpus armor but i think this is probably more of a monster race than a player race because these insects would be quite inhuman and in my mind they would only be intelligent if they are connected with the hive mind if they are near other ants and the hive mind would be more intelligent bigger the hive gets so uh, i think this will be some sort of monster race this is one of the ideas one of my friends said i like it a lot the sun in this system emits solar flares a lot so very often compared to our own sun there will be strong sun winds and when these hit the the moon and the planet and the magnetosphere around the planet it will make electromagnetic storms electromagnetic pulses and that will kill all high tech so uh, there are no more microprocessors, no more computers, no self-driving cars in this world. And that kind of is why they are stuck with 1930s technology. Have good old-fashioned mechanical carburetors, no fancy fuel injection. And there was the ideas of the sun winds influencing magic, making it stronger, maybe more chaotic. I'm not sure about that. If the magic uh, of like a warlock comes from a, from a great old one, from a pact, it wouldn't be influenced by sun winds. Maybe it would be more chaotic if the sun is somehow inherently magical in nature could be could be could be a nice complication like during a sunstorm you shouldn't spell cast because you do critical fumbles twice as much so let's highlight more chaotic and for magic i don't want just the standard D, &D magic it must fit the world so one of the ideas was to have mainly elemental magic at least for everything that's not a warlock and these could be influenced by uh, star constellations and i think i'm actually going with these elemental magic that the idea if there's one moon orbiting a gas giant there could be more than one so i've if i'm going for elemental magic i could have one moon for each element or that how it was originally set up by the gods like the next idea is the gods put the worlds and the mortal races there so the gods put these four moons around that gas giant each moon was affiliated to one element and during the uh, height of civilization and the war with the gods, this all got mixed up and messed up somehow. And now the elemental magic of all four elements is somehow on this world. Eventually I need a name for the world, for each moon, for the gas giant. 
for the solar system. Yeah, but this sounds like a fun idea. I'm going with this. Once the moons were connected by portals. So it's either portals or having spacecraft. Um, both good possibilities. I don't really uh, want space flight in this setting, I don't think. And since their technology is down to the 1930s, they wouldn't be able to build any spacecraft to get them running again. But maybe they can discover some magic portals and some point and uh, campaign could be centered around that. Maybe there's an invasion through one of the portals or a world to explore beyond the portals. Um, yeah, keep that in the back of my mind. Probably won't be important right now. But a fun idea for the, f for the future anyhow. Yeah, demonic magic, that's from the old gods, from demons, and they empower the warlocks. It's a good idea, I like that in general. I don't really want to run with the standard D&D &D magic system where you have a certain number of spells each day and you just forget them after that. It's a good serviceable system, but in this world I want something different. So one of the ideas from my friend was that these elemental magic slowly transforms the caster into the element he is casting. So each elemental magician would be specialized in one element and casting these spells would slowly turn him into the element. You get like stone skin gets very heavy, gets very slow, and eventually he becomes just a rock. It's not a bad idea, I think, to make this elemental magic uh, a bit darker, a bit more risky to cast. And this leads me that I need a corruption system for magic and maybe for more than magic. And this corruption would be gathered by using spells, would turn you into the element or into something much darker if you're a warlock. And it would show physical signs once you pass certain corruption thresholds. So uh, it will be visible and it will have some mechanical effects if your corruption level is too high. But uh, you can counteract this corruption and regenerate this corruption if you are uh, doing some human activity reminding you that you are not actually a great old one, not actually an elemental spirit, but a human or demi-human, whatever. My idea is like uh, you have a night out in a tavern or in a brothel. Uh, so the characters have some downtime between adventures. So I like that idea. In uh, Darkest Dungeons in the video game, they had a stress mechanics, and to get rid of this stress, the characters had to go to a chapel and pray, a night of drinking or gambling in the tavern, something thing like that and I like this idea it gives some uh, other things than just dungeon crawling and adventurings for the characters to do and last idea 
for this round psionic powers. There are a lot of psionic powers in Dark Sun and I don't want to copy everything from Dark Sun and just add vehicles to it. So I'm very unsure about psionic powers. Maybe, maybe not. For now I'm not highlighting it. But for now this is what I have. This is in the general ideas of the Blood Sun work in progress. And I think what I need is a to-do list. Let's make a new document. To-do list. So I need to figure out the the solar system. Let's make it a list. Need to figure out the name and the mechanics, at least for a storytelling purpose. How long is the day night cycle? What seasons do I have? What kind of geography do I have on the moon? And of course, that needs me to uh, need to figure out the world map. Need to figure out the uh, player races. And the lands and cultures of the people on those this world map, what kind of kingdoms I have, what kind of religions I have, figure out religion, need to figure out my magic system, of course, not only from a world building standpoint, but also from a rule standpoint. And then I need to figure out the rules. So, character creation, skills, magic, combat. I will have vehicle, combat and equipment, monsters. That should be enough for the moment. Yeah, there's lots to do, lots of construct construction sites I have. I will share all of my work, all of my progress with you guys. And I would be happy if you participate in this project of mine, if you comment in the video or if you join the Discord server. You can view all of this in my G Drive folder I'm sharing with you guys. And I hope this becomes a fun system, a fun world to play in. And that you learn something that you can use for your own game by viewing these videos. So, that's it for today. Thanks and goodbye.